Good morning. Welcome to KK Hendrick State Open University. Today, we will be discussing on opportunities of higher education in Europe. And it is a privilege to have with us here in studio today, Mr. Sanjeev Roy, Senior Higher Education Expert, European Union Public Diplomacy and Outreach in India and the SARC. We welcome you, sir, to our studio. And at the very outset, uh, let me say that we extend our heartfelt thanks to you for spending, uh, for giving us your valuable time and it's an honor to have you here with us today, sir. Thank you very much. So, uh, since, sir, we know that Europe is a dream destination for many students and you are an expert in the field of European higher education. So, we would like to hear from you, what makes European education or European higher education unique? Why is there so much of, you know, craze for European higher education? Okay, uh, see, Europe as a destination for higher education for Indian students. See, traditionally, if you look at Europe, uh, students from India have been chasing to go and do engineering courses courses related to science, courses related to management and they have been going typically to US as a destination followed by UK and now Australia. So Europe, why Indian students have not been going in big numbers is because people in India were not aware that in Europe the course is being offered in English language. Okay. So the notion here is that if I go to Denmark, okay. the course will be in Danish. Okay. If I go to Italy, it will be in Italian. Italian. But over and what Europe has done is they are the only continent I think in the world who are not selling education. Like you will see, you will not find any advertisement from European Union about any scholarship. You would not find any advertisement on come and study in Europe. Why is this? Because Europe as a continent, all the institutions, if you look at the history of European institutions, they have been set up in 10th century, 11th century, 12th century. If they are that old. But at the same time, so what they believe is, they believe is in small numbers, people who want to come study, do research. So their education is not like uh, KFC chicken, right? It's a traditional Indian food which we all eat, which our grandmother used to give it to us. So now Indian students have started realizing that Europe as a destination is very good from the point of education, from the point of research, from the point of opportunities for Indian students get. So that's how Europe now, you will see Europe suddenly has, is emerging as one of the top destinations for Indian students. Okay. And so how are the courses or the method of study in Europe different from uh, India? See, if you look at the uh, study, they are not different from India. Uh, because in India, what we do is we have been traditionally known as that it's a very rote learning kind of a system. You are yourself into your teaching faculty. You will know that when you are in a class, you speak. I as a student will just copy what ma'am is saying, right? So it's in, one way. It's one way traffic. Yeah. In Europe what happens is that uh, students will speak and ma'am like you would contribute. Okay, so uh, it's a... Yeah, it's, it's because it's student exactly, learning. Very, very yeah, interactive. it's not education, it's a learning which is very important. Mm -hmm. See, this is, this is a difference between our education system and theirs. We are more into education, they are more into learning. Okay. So, it is a continuous learning. Continuous learning. For so, both. both. So, for example, of late in India, we have started talking about the learning outcomes. True. In Europe, they always talk about the learning outcomes. So, they would not say that Dola Ma'am has taken four classes. They will say if Dola Ma'am took this class, what was the learning outcome for the student? Okay. Uh, so, so, suppose you have one class, learning outcome cannot be that one class. Before that, you would have told the students that you have to read all these four case study. So that again is a learning. So that's why you will see that our education system is very good. We have been producing lot of scholars, lot of, but still, why don't we have any product from India, which is number one in the world? Why is it the European products? Why is it the US product? Now look at the Nobel laureate prize. Yeah. All the prize winners, more than 50% of their base education has been in Europe. Then they have gone to US for the research. So I think uh, the European education system is more on research. It's more on students' interest. And uh, it's a learning uh, which you want to do at your own space. It's a learning. Self-learning. Kind of Self-learning. And within that also, I'll give you an example. I was doing my master's in lifelong learning, right? Okay. European policy and management. Now, suppose 
after first semester I wanted to go and learn guitar. I could do that and I could collect credits. Guitar and education, how does it make sense? Can you do this in India? We can't do that. So, at the end of my masters, if I would have shown I have got a credit in uh, music, I can add it to my masters thing. So, do, so that's why you see it's very hands on. True. Education is very hands on. For us, like we follow a strict curriculum. Yeah, we follow a strict curriculum which has. And we have to stick to that, you know. Our yeah. students do not get time for extracurricular activities, and it is like a problem now. Yeah. That you, you have to stick to study, study, and study. Yeah. That and, and that is why also you will also realize that that is why we hear about the complaint that uh, the course syllabus has not been updated it is from 1950s, 1960s, 1970s same old, same old thing. So, whereas take a small kid today in India 3 year old kid is playing with a mobile now which course offers a course in mobile see look at the difference yeah. right our 3 year old kid knows what is mobile none of our course has a mobile course. Whereas, if you look at Europe, pick up any university, they will have hundreds of courses on mobile. They have courses on uh, ICT for play school. So, what are the play school children doing with ICT? Those kind of stuff. We can't even imagine. Yeah, exactly. So, I think that is the basic difference between Europe and us. Okay. And sir, what about the application procedure? See, application procedure is very, uh, very simple. Of course, Europe being uh, still be I say 28 countries because UK is still officially part of European Union. So, since it is 28 countries, yeah. it will depend on country to country, but uh, on a broad, broad uh, what are the application processes they are looking at a good degree, but good degree that does not mean that you have to be a topper, there is very important emphasis on the statement of purpose. Why do you want, do you want to do this course? So, I will give you an example. Suppose, I have done my um, chemistry honours. BSc. Now, I want to do a course on history, right. Okay. So, how can I in India can you do you can't do that, yeah. but there if I explain to them why am I interested in the history, if I write it very well I could get admission. Okay, the statement so, of, statement of purpose is very important. For reference every course you have to uh, yeah for every course. Okay. Then references from your institution is very important, from your teacher, from a professor or someone who knows you from the field where you are working upon that is very important. How many references? Two, generally two is, two is fine, two references is good enough and um, initially for Indian students if you have been from an English medium background you never used to have to take an IELTS examination, but now few of the universities have made it compulsory. So, you need to get a band of 5.5 or 6 which is where any Indian gets it and uh, basically explaining why do you want to do the program. So, they want you to do a research on I want to do this program why suppose I want to come and so I, I would go to the department check the faculty members see what is the kind of research they have done and Their so then so then when they read the application they say oh so you have really done a research on us and so this is kind of okay, thing. They want the students to be inquisitive yeah. and curious and you know research is I think. Uh, research is lot of lot of weight is given lot of weight is given on research and quality. That is why it is self learning. Yeah. And Okay. When does it start the application process? See generally the course starts in September, October every year. So, I would advise people to start looking at the application process around November because that is the time one year before. One year before. So, one year before in November is because that is the time when the scholarships are announced, that is the time when the course admissions are announced and it takes nearly 5-6 good months before you get the whole process done. So, you have to be a student How has to. How do they look into this? Where do they? See, see again, uh, there are two things. One is that if you are looking at uh, Erasmus plus scholarship, then they have to type Erasmus plus and the scholarships are announced generally in uh, second week of October. But suppose they are looking at no, I am not Erasmus, but I want to go to Denmark, I want to go to Spain, then every country has got a national agency. Like we have UGC. So, there every country got a national agency. For example, it is called study in Denmark. Germany is called DAD, DAD. So, you have to visit all these websites. So, all one could do is say uh, go to national agencies of Europe, all the websites will come and then a student can make a choice. So, there are uh, three ways of looking into it. If you go through Erasmus, the country is not important. If you go into a country, then of course, national agencies. And third is a course. I want to do this course, then you go to a website 
for example, studying in Europe and then you say I want to do medical, they will list all the courses, universities and countries which are offering the program. Okay. And what about Erasmus Plus? How, how do they uh, look for it? Erasmus Plus again, you, uh, you go to the website of Erasmus Plus, mm -hmm. October 2nd week it is announced. It will take you to a link which is called uh, Erasmus Mundus Joint Master's Degree, EMJMD. There, there are about uh, 120 master's program where you can see and you click on the link, it will give you all the information, which are the partners, which are the institutions, where do you have to do and how do you have to go about it. Yeah, and so many of our students, they have this dream, you know, to go and study in Europe. But the thing is, they fear about the money, the, the, the amount of expenditure that will be involved and the kind of whether scholarships are available or not. So what about the scholarships? See, uh, I have not because I represent the European Union, but I was, I was should admit, Europe is one of the most generous continents which gives maximum scholarships to students all over the world. Even if you look at Erasmus, which is just one part of it, we are till date 5,000 Indian students have a full scholarship. Full scholarship, uh, full scholarship that, means, that's, that's that means your travel, your stay, insurance, food, everything, right? So that one is the Erasmus. That is a big thing. It is huge, it's huge and this is without any advertisement. Okay. <laughs> we have not advertised. Like see, even I, I am also one of those scholar, scholars. So I came to know because I am in education, I was with the British Council. So they asked me to look at the program and see how, where they should target. So what I am trying to say is the scholarships are available in most of the institutions. And secondly, suppose for some uh, reason you do not get the scholarship, then you could look into funding from the individual country, individual institutions. Oh, they also, they also have, yeah. Okay. That's the second. And the third course, the most important is that, suppose you didn't get scholarship at all, worst case scenario, the fee are very, very low. Like if you look at a top institution in Europe and try to compare with any Indian private institution, the fee will be less. Okay. Is the notion people have? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Totally so that the, so that's again a, that's again very important thing. But we are not selling it because we don't we want people to come and explore and find out to themselves. Okay. So cost of living of, of course depends from one country to another. Again, few of the countries are cheap, few of the countries are very costly. Then few of the cities are very cheap. So it depends. But a student on and all overall gets bed, best value of money. Most of the Indian students I have seen have managed scholarship somehow the or the other or have managed some kind of funding. And if you look at overall the cost of studying, cost of living, it's even if you have to pay in good places, it will be 7 to 10 lakh rupees, which which you pay exactly, which you will go to any part of the India and, and go and pay. But you think Europe, you always think it's very costly. It's not that. Uh, Only thing is, this yeah, we have this notion and there's not a lack of awareness yes, about yes. Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are not aware. Yeah. We want to, but we don't know <laughs> what to do. Yeah. What about, uh, the, since you have talked about uh, scholarships, like uh, you said uh, that individual countries or the institutions, they also fund. So we have to write to the institutions directly or? See, see uh, Dula, what, what, how it works is because generally a student knows what kind of course he or she wants to do, number one. So once you, once you identify the course, then you go and check which country I'm going to go to. Then how Indian students are very much uh, conscious about the ranking of the institutions, yes, right? Yes, I was about to ask okay. you about that. So, so, so even, so how do they choose an institution? Yeah. Sitting in Guwahati, how would you how choose? Do how do you choose? Yeah. So Indian students will type for the ranking, right? Now when you type for the ranking, so there are about four or five uh, rankings which are available all across the world. Times Higher Education Ranking, FT Ranking, QS Ranking. So people look at these top 200 institutions. You'll be surprised out of 200, more than 50% are Europeans, right? See again, mm -hmm. if, if, I, if you would have asked any person, mm -hmm. be from education, he would have said most of them are from US. Mm -hmm. But I said more than 50% are European. Mm -hmm. So then you look at the ranking of the institutions and then, so what I have seen is an Indian student, he or she does not go on uh, universities, uh, faculty member, or university research, they go on the ranking. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, we always have uh, uh, of exactly. So ranking is very important for Indian students. Second, for Indian students, generally I have seen a trend that they would look at if there is someone from the family, someone from a friend who has been to that institution, then they will choose that because they will find it familiar. Yeah. 
they don't want to go in a foreign uncertain locale and uncertain space. space. So that's again very important. So we cannot generally give a rule what is how to go about it because students are taking a different steps before they are choosing how to select an institution. True. So, but overall, overall, I would say that uh, well, when one looks at the application procedure, one looks at the program, one and English language as such at the master's level today, more than 90 percent of the European institutions are being taught in English. The yeah. courses. So, the language barrier will not be there. Yeah. yeah. And what about uh, the accommodation? Uh, like, do, are they residential? Uh, See, uh, most, of, most of the foreign students, the Indian students go as a foreign students, get uh, a residence in the hall of residence in the university campus, okay. right? Though it is slightly costly, but most of the Indian students of foreign students are given a preference. But what happens is the trend is because you have to pay more, they after three months they move to a private accommodation because in three months they, f they know about the area, they find out cheap accommodation. And uh, so, <coughs> but the accommodation is not a problem at all in the European countries, especially where you have these international universities because the university campuses are very international wherever they are, okay. right. Okay. So, they know like for example, in any course which you do in Europe, in any class uh, minimum you will have 20 nationalities. So, that itself is a learning. See, that kind of learning you cannot have sitting in a Guwahati Isolated campus. campus, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, because see, look at Guwahati. What, your 80 percent students will be local, local. Yeah, 10 to 50, 20 percent will be from outside. I am exaggerating 10 to 20 percent. Whereas, if you go to any institution in Europe, 20 percent will be local or 30 percent and rest are all international. So, that itself is a learning for you, yeah. which helps you in later life when you are going into the work space. And the, that does not uh, give you the sense of that fear is not there because the other people who are coming from different countries are also new to the place. So, you know that, that exactly. he is also new, I am also new. So, <laughs> and, 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 and it helps you to acclimatize in the area because the university, the residents, the local people are used to international students. Yeah. So, they would they are not being surprised to see you and me. True. Once we go there, they are, they are, they are used they, to it. Yeah, yeah. Used to so, it. that is very important. So, they do not get a shock, you do not get a shock. It is a environment very conducive to welcome you. Very amicable. Yeah. yeah. Do not find the need. Yeah. And uh, like um, uh, since we were talking about education and research, what are the opportunities available for Indian students besides their, uh, you know, the program they have chose to study? Are there other like similar or they, can they go for two courses simultaneously or is there such? See, two courses simultaneously would not be possible because if you are going, for example, if you are going for masters, so your major course will be masters. But as I told you, any around yeah, course around or? masters, one could do any extra course they want, and it's all free. Okay. Like as, as I said, you could do music, you could uh, do psychology, you could any anything. Yeah, that so is you have to take bonus. permission. Yeah. So you could do any other program which is of interest to you, and university welcomes that. Okay. Secondly, when you are going to a foreign country, I tell every Indian by default we knew th we know three languages. One is our mother tongue. Second, if, if Hindi is not your mother tongue is Hindi and third is English. So, when you go to a country like Europe, you will pick up the foreign language be it Italian, French, German, Danish. So, imagine a student by the time you have come out of your education system, you know four to five languages. So, that is so much welcome today in the corporate world. Suppose you have to go and work for the UNs, the world banks of the world, the multinational companies of the world and if on your CV you have a competencies of five languages, what, ends? what else do you want? True, true. <laughs> and like uh, what about the job market? Like once I go for, suppose I, I am a student, I go there for higher studies, would I be absorbed in the European job market? Or <laughs> <laughs> See, that is a very, very tricky question. I uh, will tell you that uh, Europe is an aging continent. True. So, they need people to come and work, that is the positive thing. And Second, we are a young population. We are a young, we are a young country. <laughs> we have a lot of young so, industry. and they need hard working people, again we are a hard working, hard, hard right? Working, yeah. But if a student is joining a program with that intention that I will join this program, joy, why? Because I will get a job, a job then, okay. then your chances are a bit negative. But once you go and prove your competency, prove your skills on a program, you excel on your program, you do very well, you do some extracurricular, 
99.9 percent you get a job. I got it in UK, I got it in Denmark. So, and believe you me, I never wanted a job. So, see, my friends who want a job never got it because they were working from that person. I didn't want a job. You wanted to learn. I, and I wanted to come back, but I, and I am back, and I got the job. I got a green card in Denmark. So, I tell young students, if you really want to stay there, but don't keep that in your mind. Focus on your academics. Focus on your learning. Focus on your environment. Focus on the because see, if you're going to Germany, and if you start behaving, talking like German, right, and you learn the language very fast, and you excel in your engineering program, ninety-nine point nine percent you'll be absorbed. There's, there's no. It's a very simple formula. But if I go with this attention, okay, I'll go and uh, just for the job purpose. Then, you, then you would not. So I think uh, education. Is very important. What they are learning, it should be hands-on. Uh, while doing the program, there are a lot of projects which the student does. That's again very important. So you should do a project, which should be building your portfolio. One doesn't realize, okay. like see, when I was doing a project, I did A project, then I did B. B means it was higher than A. Then C. So it was a continuous thing which I did. Okay. So I myself, because see, that you have to choose on your own. own no, of course, is it, that's it. This Depends is. Depends on the student how many projects he can. Do no, no, no. So, no. Every paper has a project. Okay. So now, you what you what you do is you choose any project. But if if a student thinks um, logically, let's see, in a master's program after two years, you don't become an expert. But if you have done a same project eight times at a higher level, so that itself it makes you an expert. Some in that field. Yeah. So that's why I tell students you should choose. Don't. Take okay, one project is second, earlier, second, other. Don't do that. Achha, same project. Say, you say, to try to build on, build on the build thing, build on. on. The so it's like building your structure of the home. True. So if you have done it that way, then your chances of and uh, one also needs to understand uh, two things very important. Your interest is important because sometimes if you do things which you are not interested, you will never do it very well. So a job is something which you need to love, right? So. If you choose an industry which you are very passionate about, True. then you read as much as possible, do as many attend conferences. Make the things yeah, autonomous. and then automatically you will get the best of the. Because you yeah. have your passion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. True. And uh, see, uh, since you are an expert in that field <laughs> of European higher education, and uh, like uh, we would like <coughs> to know from you, uh, the, which are the countries? where you know there are huge number of Indian students or which are the countries which attract Indian students more or perhaps there is a good See, uh, if you look at the trend for the last uh, four years, I will tell you because it is relevant to talk about the last four years, Germany has been number one, yeah. followed by France, then you have uh, Italy, Spain, Sweden, Netherlands, these are the kind of, these are the countries which are attracting lot of Indian students yeah. and after these, the, then you have the Scandinavian countries. Denmark, Norway, Sweden has moved up, Finland again, but with the Scandinavian countries, they do not want big numbers, they only want 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And uh, Germany, then I think Germany is about 15,000 plus. Okay, yeah, huge number. Yeah, yeah, every year. And then you 15, have 15,000 plus every year? Yeah. yeah. So, it is uh, about Indian students going abroad is about 300,000 every year. That is a huge, yes, huge, a huge number. number. Yeah, yeah, because uh, Indian students as I said, as the awareness is growing, they are realizing instead of going to a local private institute anywhere, I might just pay and go abroad. And then of course, when they are going abroad, when they come back, the learning is much more because see, the, forget about the education. If a student has gone and stayed for two years abroad on her own, cooked, stayed, lived, it is all learning. So when you come back, you are a different yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. So today, <coughs> today any job, any job, you talk about any job, it is a holistic of a personality. You know, you should be knowing how to speak, you should be knowing how to make tea at home. So if a person is complete, it is a 360 degree. Right? What happens is in Indian homes, what we do is, if a student, a yeah, you know, you compare two families, look, look at your own, two own families, yeah. a child who has been with a parent and a child who has gone to the hostel, you see the difference? Yes, yes, there is a right? huge difference. So, so now imagine the third child who has gone abroad, abroad yeah. right? So, 
And I am not talking of education, I am not talking of the learning, I am talking of the personality. 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 Yeah. So, and today, you know, when, when you are getting into any job, you know it very well, you have been working. It is not only one trait, it is so many so things you have to do, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you, need to have, you need to love to talk to people, for example, if you, if you are very good in economics, you do not love to talk to people, people you are a failure. Yeah. Right? So, that is why I said. So, I personally, because I have been a product of uh, Indian and European education system, I think it is very important for everyone who gets an opportunity. And I tell people, you know, you should try to avail scholarships and go. I am not saying spend your parents' hard earned money and you go work for, because there are so many scholarships available. The problem is students do not know about it and I do not blame yeah, them. They are not but, aware about it actually. But of late I started blaming them because all of them have mobile. Yeah, they are 24 by 7, they are chatting, Google, Facebook. Facebook. Then why can't you go and find out? In my time, I could be blamed because I had, did not have. So then to find out, how do you find? But today, a child knows everything because the world is at your fingertips. Fingertips, yeah, fingertips. And so it is more like a personality development. It is. Apart from education, yeah. personality develops. Personality develops your interest. Interest. Like, for example, I will tell you, uh, when I went, I could never think on the weekend we could go for a trekking, right? Mm -hmm. So, friends in my university, because Europeans say, Oh, what are you doing on the weekend? I said, Nothing. I thought as an Indian, I'll wash my clothes, wash. Oh, we'll do this. Let's go on trek. So, now when you go on trek, you learn so many things. So many things. Okay, let's, buy, let's bicycle for two days. Yeah. Again. So, these are the kind of things you make friends for life. That's mm -hmm. very important. You learn so many things on the course, which comes very handy. Like you know, in education, they say tangible benefit, intangible, intangible. benefit. These are intangible, intangible benefits, benefits. Yes, which network, helps you a lot. Yeah, exactly. Across all the countries, probably you'll have yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah. And and that is also a great big thing, you know, having people. Yeah, today because today today's world, what is important? Social capital. Social capital, networking. Yeah, yeah that's very important. <laughs> true. And uh, what about uh, the research? I mean. For postdocs or what kind of? Uh, See, uh, after after masters, uh, again uh, there is a program called European uh, Joint uh, Doctor Program by Erasmus. That's number one. Then there is a uh, Marie Curie, Clodoska Curie action. Again, uh, for PhD students. Then there is uh, Horizon 2020 for science students. So, the moment you have done your masters, a na. In most of the cases, if you have done very well, your professor will absorb you in your PhD program. The moment you are doing your PhD in Europe, you are part of the teaching faculty, okay. right? A PhD you student, stipend? yeah, no stipend, salary. Okay. PhD in Europe is a salary. Oh, you that's are, a yeah. great news. <laughs> <laughs> so the moment you are doing your PhD in Europe, you are a part of the faculty member, right? And you will be given all the facilities which a teaching staff gets and you are on the pay roll. Okay. Payroll. Yeah. So, you have done your PhD, after PhD, again postdoc, again. So, system is such that if it is very fluid. If you are working and you are very keen, you keep on moving. There is no end to it. True. And that is what I have seen the best part in Europe because as I said, a, because uh, if you look at the teaching community there, look at the professors, look at the researchers, they are looking for young people who are hard working. And actually we Indians stick that very well, because we are young, we are very hard working and if an Indian comes to know I work hard, I will get this, he or she will do that. Do that. Yeah. So, that is why we as a community are very much welcomed and it is a very good opportunity for young Indians. I do not say go and stay there, I say you go learn, see how they do it, then come back and give to this country. Yeah. This country needs you more than anyone else. True, <laughs> that is true. Go <coughs> and then learn and then come back. Exactly. Yeah, true. And uh, what about uh, the summer schools and the exchange programs? They have, we often hear about uh, exchange programs to Europe or summer schools in Europe that, that also attracts. See, uh, yeah, see, the, see that there are uh, two ways of going about the summer schools and exchange program. Under Erasmus, there is something called the ICM. International Credit Mobility. Under International Credit Mobility, a student, teaching staff, non-teaching staff, all can go to Europe. Okay? So, a student can go from one semester that is three months up to one year. Teaching staff, non-teaching staff can go from two days up to 60 days. Right? So, that is under International Credit Mobility. Only thing what you need to do is 
there has to be an um, agreement between your institution and the receiving institution that for example, DOLA will be going on uh, a three month teaching program or mobility program which is being paid by the European Union. So, your travel, your salary everything is paid right so, that is one exchange program again that is between institution to institution. So, in that uh, there is no uh, payment because then your for example, your students are going to a, a Spanish university and so, the you do not take the fee they do not take the fee students have to bear the cost, but again this is opening up very well now. Summer school is on the same uh, trend of the exchange. So, there are three different mm -hmm. scenarios, but international credit mobility is very good. Why? Because you are getting paid, you are getting everything getting is taken care of. Your yeah. and everything. everything, yeah. How, how do one apply? Again, the call is going to be announced. Erasmus, all calls are announced in second week of October, and they are open from October to nearly third week of February every year. So, for example, this year 2017, they will open in the second week of October until 2018 Feb, it will close. Okay. So, you apply on this and once you, you have to give the institution and all that. Yeah, yeah there is agreement form which you go and give it to show it to your registrar. Your registrar, for example, for faculty members is nothing because you are not getting credit. But suppose I am a student at your institution and I want to go to this university. So, and I will be missing 6 months from here. So, you will say Sanjeev what are you going to do for 6 months. So, there has to be an agreement that Sanjeev when he is in Spain will be doing this program will collect so many credits and that credit is equivalent to your 2 semesters here. Okay. Right. So, that is the kind of agreement between a registrar to so that the registrar. does not lose his no, 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 no. Oh, that is great. So, he can just uh, the, the credit will be transferred. Yeah, yeah. That is why I tell the students do, whenever you are doing this involve your institution, involve your registrar because see a registrar has to know that ok now you are going to Spain for 2 months or 2 semesters, what are the credits, what are you doing there. So, if that is agreement is done for student is taken care again faculty member you do not need credits, but still is much better for even faculty members even for non teaching staff even they can, they can go yeah they can also the non teaching staff get scholarship from uh, 2 days up to 60 days. So, you, they can go on a training program. Suppose, for example, in your university, I am just getting okay, there is an international office. Okay, okay. So, there is a director of international office. Now, that person wants to know how do I take care of international students? They, they could go on a training program. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, the list of the programs are there in the website? No, no, no. These are not list. You choose. See, see, this is a dollar you need to understand about Europe, which is very important is that uh, especially in these kind of programs, they do not say if you for masters of course, they say. For us yeah, everything is listed. Listed. <laughs> these are like programs. You make what you want to do. Okay. So, so you identify an institution, you think okay that is very good for me and then you will go for that. And you have to write to them. Yeah, because t today again we talked about network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, everyone is network today, right? So, you write to your friends and that is how ah. one can know. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. My pleasure, Thanking my us. pleasure. No, 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 <laughs> my pleasure. Time. It was really a great opportunity to listen to you, and it was it is a privilege for our university and for our guests, for the audience who is listening to you to to hear from an expert and to hear from a person who has been himself in Europe for several years in several universities. I know it is a great, great opportunity for all of us and we really thank you. And at the end, uh, we would like to hear from you some at least words of advice or you have already, your words of wisdom has already enlightened us and still any kind of advice see, you uh, my give to us and the students. See, my uh, advice to the students who want to go study in Europe is that be sincere, chase your dream, do research on what you want to do, just do not think of doing anything, make your own plan and believe you me within Europe you will find a program, a course which will be matching your interest and go for it. Because I, I personally believe especially for young Indians, we are making them put follow a box, they need to come out of this. They do not have to do a BA history, a BA political science, why? Because the university is offering it. If I want to do a course in BA music, I want to do BA, I do not know, sports, let me go and find out. And Europe but has… we follow the traditions. <coughs> so exactly. And I think that is the difference between our, our Indian, young Indians and the people from across the world. They 
see look look at students look at all the successful stories from US most of them are school dropout right just look so, at that. Yeah. So, that means there is some thing which is our education system change you down right. So, I would suggest I would tell our students is you know think big be bold be bold you know uh, be strong and just follow your dream dreams, yeah. make it a passion and you will be very happy at the end of the so day. We should all have dreams we should try to fly high be bold and you just pursue our dreams right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a great opportunity listening to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.